This program brought to you in part by the Erica Lewis Endowment Fund. Coming up, it's the Meadows <laughs> taking on Coronado. This is the Varsity Quiz Silver League Championship. Hello and welcome to the 54th season of Varsity Quiz. We've got the best and the brightest high school kids matching wits in this unique academic competition. Well, we started with 19 schools in the Silver League in three different divisions. Now the road to the Varsity Quiz 23 Silver League Championship ends tonight. The Meadows defeated defending champion Clark in their semifinal to earn their spot here. Let's meet their starters. There's Kira. Hi, Kira. Hello. Hey, Lawrence. Hello. There's Ben. Hey there. And there's Brindley. Hello. And the coaches for the Meadows, Gary Handley and Tom Garvey. Now let's meet the players. For Coronado, they eliminated Gorman in their semifinal. Their starters are Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Hi. There's Mira. Hi. And there's Frank. Hi. And there's Mason. Hello. And the coach for Coronado is Matt Aberman. Students, are you ready? Let's play Varsity Quiz. One of these objects in yellow and blue is barely visible in the upper left corner of Rembrandt's Night Watch. In Liberty Leading the People, Eugene Delacroix depicted a woman waving a tricolor one. The Meadows, Ben. Flag. Yes. Next question. What country was led by Salvador Allende from 1970? That would be the Meadows, Ben. Chile. Yes. Name the language known to its speakers as Kartvelian, with more than three million speakers in a country on the Black Sea. Now, we'll go with the Meadows, Ben. Bulgarian. No, that is an interrupt. I will finish reading the question. It sounds like it should be spoken by people who live in a southern U.S. state, but this region is at the meeting point of Eastern Europe and Asia. Coronado, Frank. Georgian. Yes. Points on the board now for Coronado. Uh, next question. In 1842, the U.S. and British colonies resolved several border disputes by signing this treaty that effectively defined the northeastern boundary between the U.S. and Canada. Name this agreement, which includes both the American and British negotiators' names. The Meadows, Ben. Uh, Ash and Bury Treaty. Incorrect. Uh, Coronado, Miriam? Mason-Dixon Agreement? No, it was the Webster-Ashburton Treaty. No points, we move to the next question. Arguably the most famous diary written in the English language, this work was begun in 1660, ending in, in 1669. Name this work that offers richly detailed descriptions of the turbulent times. Uh, that was Samuel Pepys. Next question, as of January 2023, what position does Dennis McDonough hold in the President's Cabinet? The Meadows, Ben? Secretary of the VA. No, uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, this 29-year-old had been helping her father map the night skies when she discovered a comet and determined its orbit. Her name was Maria. She went on to become the first professional woman astronomer in the U.S. What was her last name? The Meadows, Kira? Hallie? No. Coronado, Frank? Smith. No, it was Mariah Mitchell. No points. Next question, students, is a calculation question. Find the local maxima and the local minima of the function f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 15 using the second derivative test. That's Coronado, Frank. Minima one, maxima three. No. Uh, you, you got it backwards. The maxima is one, the minima is three. Next question, students. These become elevated in the blood in the case of fasting. Diets that avoid carbohydrates or uncontrolled diabetes and are used as solvents in your system. What organic compounds generally arise when your body does not have enough glucose to provide the energy needed causing a condition that ends in acidosis? Uh, that's Coronado Mason. Lactic acid compounds? No. Uh, the Meadows, Ben? Kino. Pardon me? Kino. No, we were looking for ketones. Next question. In slightly different spellings, what given name do these people share? The composer of the Resurrection Symphony, the French engineer known as the Magician of Iron, 
and the author of Madame Bovary. Coronado, Miriam? Gustave. Correct. Now, in the collection Dark Water, this sociologist outlined his concept of the veil that separated black Americans from the rest of society. He coined the term double consciousness for the inner turmoil caused by viewing oneself through the lens of a racist oppressor. Who was he? Coronado Mason. Baldwin. No. Of the Meadows, Ben. Du Bois. Yes, W.E.B. Du Bois. Next question. What was the title of Emile Zola's letter of January 1898 in which he demanded uh, the Meadows Band? J'ai accuse. Yes. Less complicated to administer than a national monument, what designation does the National Park Service give to such significant historical places as Bent's Old Fort, Pennsylvania Avenue, Golden Spike, the Springfield Armory, Andersonville, and Chimney Rock? The Meadows, Ben. National Monument. Incorrect. Uh, Coronado Mason. Landmarks. No, they are National Historic Sites. Next question is a calculation question. A movie theater charges $5 for each adult, $2 for a child. One Saturday, the theater sold a total of 785 tickets with receipts totaling $3,280. How many children's tickets were sold? That's Coronado, Frank. 215. Yes. Next question. Mary, Queen of Scots, did it in 1567. Louis Bonaparte, King of Holland in 1810. Edward VIII in 1936. Victor Emmanuel, and that'll be the Meadows Brindley. Abdicate. Correct. Uh, next question. Deneb is a bright star that forms the tail of the swan, while Denebola serves as the tail of the lion. Those two stars are found in which two constellations? Uh, Coronado Mason. Cygnus and Leo. Correct. Next question. 16th century German historian Hieronymus Wolff popularized what two-word term for the Greek-speaking realm of the Middle Ages that centered on Constantinople? That's the Meadows, Ben. The Byzantine Empire. Correct. Next question. Discovered by Vachel Lindsay, he wrote Shakespeare in Harlem. The Negro Speaks of Rivers was the first published poem by this Poet Laureate of Harlem. Name the author. The Meadows, Ben. Langston Hughes. Yes, sir. Uh, these objects are called singular if they have no inverse, which will be the case if their determinant is zero. Coronado, Frank. Matrices. I don't think we can take that. That is an interrupt. Let me finish reading the question. What are these mathematical objects that consist of entries arrayed in an equal number of rows and columns? The Meadows, Brindley. Matrix. No, that's incorrect. We were looking for square matrix or square matrices. And I was calling on Brindley on that one, Lawrence. That's okay. Next question. Several ways to use this word. The yellow variety of a string bean is called this. Batik, painting on cloth to which this substance has been applied. Uh, we'll go with the Meadows, Kira. Wax. Yes. The 100 seats in the U.S. Senate are basically identical, but the desk that always goes to the senior senator from Mississippi has a small block of mahogany inlaid in it. It's a repair from the damage caused when a Union soldier bayoneted that desk that had been used most recently by what other Mississippian? The Meadows, Ben. Jefferson Davis. Yes, sir. Next question. Five of Shakespeare's plays have characters named Antonio in their dramatis personae. Name one of the five plays. That's Coronado Frank. The Tempest. Yes. Others, Two Gentlemen of Verona, Merchant of Venice, Much Ado About Nothing, and Twelfth Night. Next. With the revival of interest in classical Latin and Greek during the Renaissance, what was the third and more ancient language to gain in popularity among scholars? The Meadows, Kira. Yes. Next question is a calculation question. The sum of the ages of Nicole and Kristen is 32 years. In two years, Nicole will be three times as old as Kristen. How old is each of them right now? Let me repeat. Okay, Coronado, Frank. Nicole is 25, Kristen 7. That is correct. Next question. Mary Elizabeth Sawyer was born in 1806. One day in 1815, 
What happened on the way to the Redstone Schoolhouse outside of Boston that led to a nursery rhyme being written about her? Coronado Mason. She brought a sheep. Nope. The Meadows Lawrence. She brought, to, uh, she, br she brought a lamb to school. I don't know if we can accept that. No, she didn't bring it. Her little lamb followed her to school. So no points on that one. And that is the end of our first round. So before we move on, though, we do want to learn a little bit more about our players. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to meet some of these players as they competed in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. So as we say hello to our players from the Meadows, we'll start with Kira. Hi, Kira. Hello. Nice to see you again. So as a senior, I'm just curious to know if you've made your post high school plans. Um, I intend to be an illustration major, but I don't know where yet. Hopefully you've got some apps in and hopefully some yes. folks are getting back to you. I do have a few acceptance letters, which is oh, nice. Oh, good. Well, good luck with your post-high school career and good luck your varsity quiz. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, here is a 12th grader, Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. Hello. Good to see you again. Uh, have you made your post-high school plans? Well, I haven't decided which college I'm going to. Still playing the waiting game on that, but uh, I plan to major in computer science and linguistics. Excellent. So you have some choices to make. Yep. Well, good luck with that. Good luck on varsity quiz. Thanks, Lawrence. Thank you. Uh, here's 11th grader, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hey there. So you have a year to wait, but have you thought ahead to what's going to happen after high school? Uh, I have. It's, it's dawned on me that later this year I'm going to be submitting college apps, so that's like a wave that's about to hit me, but right. uh, we'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So definitely somewhere there's college in your future. Yes, I think awesome. so. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. Good luck on varsity quiz. I uh, hear senior Brinley. Brinley, so the future is about to jump on you. What are your post-high school plans? Yes, I hope to study classics in college, but I don't know where. Uh, I have have not heard back from any colleges. Uh, so uh, like Lawrence, I'm playing the very long waiting game. Okay, well, patience and good luck, and good luck on Varsity Quiz. Those are our players from the Meadows. Nice to see you guys again. And let's talk to our players from the Coronado High School. Now, Miriam, you, you've still got a few years to go. Yeah, I do. But are you, so you're a freshman, right? Yes. Are you looking forward to the post-high school years, or you're not going to worry about that yet? Well, um, I do want to go into pediatric oncology, so basically that's children's cancer. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'd rather be a happy, decent person, not make the same mistakes twice, be kind to everybody. I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. That sounds great, Miriam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep up the good work and good luck on Varsity Quiz. Thank Hopefully you. we'll see you again next year. Uh, and here's Mira. Uh, this says you're, you're grade 12.5. Yeah, we're almost done with halfway of you know, senior okay. year. Okay. So. so have you made your post-high school plans? Um, kind of. I'm waiting to hear back from a few places, but I got into Georgetown Early Action, so I'm probably going to be a history major there in the fall. Wonderful. Well, good luck with wherever you end up and good luck here on Varsity Quiz. Thank you so much. Here's senior Frank. Hey, Frank. Hello. What's the future? I'm probably going to go into chemical engineering. Have you picked a school or has a school picked you? Uh, not quite yet. Okay, well you got time. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck on Varsity Quiz. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another senior. Here's Mason. Hi, Mason. Hello. The future's right ahead. Would be good to know it, but I don't. <laughs> uh, but there, got some, something post high yeah. school? I mean, I'll probably major in something STEM, and I have a few acceptance letters good. so far. Well, good luck with all of that. And good luck on Varsity Quiz. Ladies and gentlemen, the team from Coronado. All right, our bonus round coming right up. Going into round two, the score, the Meadows, 50 points to Coronado's 25. Before we begin the second round, we do have a new player for the Meadows. We say hello to Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Hey. Welcome aboard. Have some fun. Uh, Coronado has the same player. So which Department of the Treasury is responsible for ensuring adequate amounts of currency are in circulation and producing the country's money? Coronado, Frank? The Mint. That is incorrect. The Meadows, Ben? The Federal Reserve. That's incorrect. It is the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Next is a calculation question, students. If a single elimination pickleball tournament begins with 128 players, how many rounds must be played before the winners? De That's Coronado, Frank. Seven. Correct. Bonus questions now for Coronado only. <clears throat> if two sets, A and B, have 99 elements in common, then the number of elements common to each of the sets, A times B, and B times A are blank. Second question. How many ways can you write a three-digit positive integer using one, three, five, seven, and nine, if no number may be used twice? The same. This person try 99 maybe for the first one. But the second one's definitely 60. Sure. Right. 
Uh, first answer, 9,801. Second answer, 60. I believe those are both correct. You got bonus points. Uh, now this next question for both teams. The first test of the West's resolve to fight communism in Europe, that came when Harry Truman called for resources to help two countries to remain democracies. Name either. The Meadows, Ben. Turkey. Yes, the other Greece. Bonus questions now for the Meadows only about the Iron Curtain. First, who first used the iconic phrase during a 1946 speech saying, an iron curtain has descended across the continent? Second, which nation, with Alexander Dubček as the first secretary of its Communist Party, enjoyed a brief period of liberalization from January 5, 1968 until Soviet tanks rolled into the capital and crushed it in August of that year? The first answer is Winston Churchill, and the second answer is Czechoslovakia. Both are correct. You got bonus points. And now this question for both teams. What medical condition is an Ishihara test used to diagnose? The Meadows, Ben? Uh, Kawasaki's disease. Incorrect. Coronado, Mira? Hashimoto's disease. No, it's color blindness. Next question for both teams. What first name does a Charles Dickens title character share with a Supreme Court Justice of the early 1900s and a Hollywood director, and that's Coronado Mason. Oliver. Correct. Bonus questions now for Coronado, only about literature. First, what German author wrote of a young student who, tired of fetching water by pail, enchants brooms to do the work for him? And second, 12 Nobel laureates in literature were identified as American, with men composing 75% of the list. But we want you to please name one of the women recognized for their writing by the Swedish Academy. You have 10 seconds. Oh, for Nobel Prize, second one should be Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison? I was going to say Atlas Walker. Toni Morrison. Yeah. Yeah. First one. First one's Grimm? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. First answer, Grimm. Second answer, Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison is correct. The first answer is Goethe. So some bonus points, not all. Uh, and we move on to this question for both teams. Which coffee brand began using the slogan, good to the last drop in its advertising, and that's Coronado, Frank. Folders. That is incorrect. Uh, we're looking for Maxwell House. Next question. What epic poem by Virgil tells the legendary story, uh, Coronado Mason? The Aeneid. Correct. Bonus questions now for Coronado only about literature. First, although read now as novels, which 19th century author's work first appeared in serialized form? His first effort, the Pickwick Papers, established this trend. And second, which author's experience as a World War II prisoner of war provided a, an important part of the plot in his novel Slaughterhouse-Five? You have 10 seconds. First one, maybe uh, Horatio Alger? I think that could work. I yeah. wouldn't know. Okay. Uh, First answer, Horatio Alger. Second answer, Kurt Vonnegut. Vonnegut is correct. The first one's Dickens. So some bonus points. Now this question for both teams. Geologically speaking, what is a synonym for aggradation? Meadows, Ben? Erosion. Incorrect. Coronado, Frank? Sedimentation. No, we were looking for accretion. Next question. In the Gospel of Wealth, he argued... Um, Coronado Mason? Carnegie. Yes. Bonus questions now for Coronado only about Carnegie. First, the ultimate self-made man, he started working in a textile mill, delivered telegrams, learned Morse code, became a telegraph operator, then worked for the director of which home state railroad? Second, one of the bloodiest attempts at strike breaking involved which Carnegie facility where Henry Clay Frick used Pinkertons and National Guardsmen to crush the strike? Hey, you have 10 seconds. Haymarket. Hey Haymarket. Hey okay, Haymarket, hey right. So. First one's Pennsylvania, right? Yes. All right, first answer, Pennsylvania. Second answer, Haymarket. Pennsylvania is correct. The second, the Homestead Plan. So some bonus points and this question. During the fall, the president of which South American nation created a crisis after his arrest? This followed an attempt to dissolve the Congress. Uh, Coronado Mason? Peru. Correct. Bonus questions now for Coronado only about South America. First, which leader of Chile was toppled by the coup that installed Augusto Pinochet as the leader of Chile? Second, part of South America composes the only territory on the mainland of North or South America that's governed by a European state. What area is it? Frank, Frank, yeah. Yeah. 10 seconds. Now, the first one, was it already in the toss-ups? Who was the leader of Chile before Pinochet? Um, Just guess. No. Right. I'm this argument. 
All right. First answer, Garcia. Second answer, French Guiana. French Guiana is correct. The first one was Salvador Allende. So some bonus points. And our speed round is next. Going into round three, the score, the Meadows, 65 points to Coronado's 80. Now for the Meadows, Brindley's back. Hey, Brindley, welcome back. Thank you. And for Coronado, we welcome a new player, Marie. Hi, Marie. Hi. Welcome aboard. Let's go. Just below the lithosphere and including the upper part of the mantle is which ductile part of the Earth's interior? Uh, that's the Meadows, Ben. The mantle? No. Nope. Uh, Coronado Mason? The crust? No, it's called the asthenosphere. Next question. Pinckney's Treaty and the adams onius Treaty are part of which state's early history? The Meadows, Lawrence. Louisiana. Incorrect. Coronado Frank. Texas? No, it's Florida. Next question is a calculation question. We don't repeat them here in the third round, so listen up. $10,000 invested in two accounts, one paying 5% annually, the other 9% annually. How much was invested at 9% if the annual incomes from both investments was $660? That'll be Coronado, Frank. 4,000. Yes. Next question. Sports drinks replace what ionized chemical? Uh, the Meadows, Kira? Electrolytes. Yes. What southern Mediterranean coast has the same name as a former Las Vegas? The Meadows, Brindley? Amalfi. That is incorrect, and that is an interrupt. A southern Mediterranean coast, same name as a former Las Vegas Strip Hotel and Casino that was located between the Flamingo and Bally's. Uh, Coronado Marie? The Gold Coast? No, you're close. It was the Barbary Coast. Next question. What kind of poem consists of three lines in each stanza? Coronado Mason? Haiku. Incorrect. And that is an interrupt, each of which share the same end rhyme. The Meadows, Kira? A triplet? Uh, yes. Next question. Quincentennial events occur how many times? The Meadows, Lawrence? Twice. That is an interrupt and an incorrect answer. Quincentennial events occur how many times in four millennia? Coronado, Frank? Eight. Yes, sir. Uh, next question. The British Major General Edward Braddock was killed during what war? The Meadows, Ben? War, uh, the Seven Years' War. Yes. What word names a watertight chamber used for building underwater bridge foundations in addition? Coronado, Frank? A bell. Incorrect, and that is an interrupt, in addition to a horse-drawn vehicle used to carry ammunition or coffins in military funerals. The Meadows, Ben? Hearse. No, it's a caisson. Next question. When driving, three school zone moving violations will always get you a ticket. One speeding, the second not yielding to pedestrians. What's the third? Coronado Marie? Stopping at a school bus. Incorrect. The Meadows, Ben? Double parking. No, it's the old U-turn. No points, next question. Expressed as a decimal, what's the sales tax rate for Clark County, Nevada? Uh, the Meadows, I mean, sorry, that's Coronado, Marie. 0 .025, 0 .08. I have to take that as an incorrect. That's the Meadows, Brindley. Uh, 0 0.825. No, it is 0 0.08375. Next question, there are two double landlocked countries in the world, meaning all of the neighboring countries are also landlocked. Name either one. Coronado, Frank. Liechtenstein. Yes, or Uzbekistan. These pairs of words illustrate what kind of rhyme? Worm, swarm. The meadows, Sorry. Kira. Slant rhyme? Yes. The plays of Aeschylus, Euripides, and Sophocles were once performed at the Theater of Dionysus. It sat at the foot of which Athenian citadel? The Meadows, Brindley? The Parthenon? No. Coronado, Miriam? The Acropolis? It was the Acropolis, yes. Next question is a calculation. Again, no repeating here, so listen up. Alexis is riding the giant drop at Great America. If Alexis free falls for 2.60 seconds, what will be her final velocity? Uh, the Meadows, Lawrence? Uh, 26 meters per second. I don't think we can accept that. Nope. Coronado, Frank? 25.48 meters per second. 
I think we can accept that. Yes, we were going for 25.5, so we'll round up. Next question. The two most common types of financial bonds are municipal and what other? Uh, Coronado Mason. Mutual? No, they are corporate. Which British Army officer played an important role in the Arab revolt against the Ottoman? That's Coronado, Frank. Lawrence. Yes. Which language is an absolute necessity for somebody wanting a career as a diplomat, since all treaties continue to be written in this language? The Meadows, Ben. English. That's incorrect. Coronado, Miriam. Latin. No, it's French. Next question. Many of the largest instances of investment fraud involve paying high returns to new investors by using the funds of the new investors. These bear the name of a famous businessman, Coronado Frank. Ponzi schemes. Yeah. What day of the week was named for the Norse goddess who was Odin's wife? Coronado, Miriam. Friday. Yes. L.L. Bean's one of the states of which state's largest private employers? Coronado Mason. Maine. Yes. The modern usage of 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, that's based on what number system developed a Coronado Mason? Hexadecimal. That's incorrect. The modern usage of 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, based on what number system developed in ancient Babylonia? And did you ring in the Meadows Kira? Base 60. I don't think we can accept that. We will look, can we? I don't think it's the same thing. Sexagesimal. <laughs> Is that the same thing? Okay, then we'll, we'll, we'll give that to you. And time's up. Let's find out who won. And our final score, Coronado 110 to the Meadows 80. Congratulations to both teams for an excellent match. But we do need to say congratulations to Coronado, the Varsity Quiz 2023 Silver League champions, and Phil Colosimo, the president of the Kiwanis Club, with a trophy presentation to our captain. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> One more round of applause for our champions, Coronado. And thank you to the Meadows for an excellent match. Now, we want you to stay tuned next week because we have a lighthearted, fun-filled all-star match of the Silver League, but we're also doing some important things in that match. We're also going to name the Coach of the Year. We're going to induct someone into the Varsity Quiz Hall of Fame, and perhaps even more importantly, you will learn the winner of the Howard Naylor Scholarship. So be with us next week for the all-star match on Varsity Quiz, right here on Vegas PBS.